And we will now move over to our first international speaker, uh, Trineke Kammerling. Uh, and um, Trineke is working at the Collection Information Department at Risk Museum Amsterdam as an information specialist. And in her job, she is responsible for the analog and digital information <coughs> pertaining to the museum's collection. A warm welcome to Trineke. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this DE Gould conference. And I was asked, let me see. I was asked to tell you something about the digital strategies concerning our collections. And I would love to do that, of course. Almost three years ago, these fireworks went off. Our queen, now Princess Beatrix, reopened the Dutch National Treasure Room, the Rijksmuseum, after 10 years of extensive renovations. And at that time, I was not yet working for the museum, but I was probably the same like you all, very much anxious to visit the new Rijksmuseum. My name is Trineke Kameling, and I've been working since 2014, both as an application manager and as an information specialist on the collection information department. And this department was a part of the collection department, but since two months, we are merged together with our <coughs> research library to a, con to a, a complete new department called Research Services. At our department... Sorry. At our department, we maintain a collection uh, database. That forms the uh, central spot for all the links with all kinds of information. All this information houses in our collection management system called Adlib. Originally a library system, but also used by museums and archives for many years. And as you might know, it's now uh, uh, belongs to a Swedish company called Axiel. So that's our basis. And from Adlib there are many links. There's a link with our library system, Koha, which describes um, the items from the most... Um, I can't read. I'm sorry, my lens is... Uh, I can move on. Uh, <laughs> uh, which describes the items from the most extensive art library in the Netherlands. But there is also a link to our image library, Media Bin, the so-called DAM system with our digital asset management. And at the moment we are working on digitization of the, of the collection information, for example, inventory cards, inventory books, object files, conservation and restoration reports, loan agreements, etc to put it all in a document management system. So in the end, everything comes together online, on our website, on the internet. So with a collection of more than one million objects, including the Night Watch, as you see here, we stepped into a new world in 2013. And this picture, which we picked up from the social media, is uh, very recognizable nowadays. But if you look better, you keep on wondering, are they uh, checking their Facebook or do they looking at a multimedia tour? And one thing is for sure, last year we got 325,000 children in our museum, of which 128,000 school kids, <coughs> which is a huge amount and we are very proud of. So open, 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 those are the magic words. Not only to the physical collection, but also to the online collection. We wanted all the objects in high resolution proudly present to the world. But how do you get there? Not sharing or hiding your collection from the internet would be ridiculous. All of our famous works of art are already online. This is a screenshot from Google Images with our famous Vermeer, 
available already in a million different variations. The big question is, which image comes close to the real Vermeer? I would have to guess myself. And that means that most people will have to guess. And that probably means that we all end up with a wrong concept of the milkmaid. So the starting point was unity in the jumble of images in different sizes and variations in colors. High image quality is very important for the Rijksmuseum, and our files are constantly approved to the latest versions and the highest standards. Our images are free and open to everyone, so use them instead of picking out one of these. For this aim, several projects were founded. First, we set up a digitization street, the so-called Print Room Online project, for more than 700,000 objects and drawings, prints. Uh, that's two-thirds of our collection, and that means that every day almost 15 catalogers are describing the various sub-collections. We enlarged the number of photo photographers, and uh, the, the image has been checked and processed and linked finally to the data and uploaded to the website. So together with two project leaders, this group of people assimilate 40,000 objects a year. Of course, not everything we are allowed to get on, uh, online. We are dealing with copyrights, therefore we started a clear the copyrights project as well and check them before they are put online. We made one special tab in our collection management system. And uh, if the image isn't downloadable, you get this message. And we made a special contract. And we celebrate Public Domain Day every day, the 1st of January, every year, sorry. So that means every year we got more images available online. And the ambition is to have photographed the entire collection in 2020. That's quite an ambition. So the Rijks Museum is an open organization. It brings people, art and history together. And summarized in this quote from our director of collections, the Rijks Museum is all about art, about images. We want to share these images with everyone using the internet. The technology is in fact about sharing. That's why we have decided to put everything free of use, up to date, and the best quality on the internet. Whatever you're looking for, you can download it and use it as you like. So this open sharing, connecting, and caring vision means that the museum shares all its images, information, and knowledge. And the internet is the best way to share this. It's widely available, it's free, and sharing co and connecting is the basis of internet already. In order to use the full range of possibilities of the internet, we had to open our collections. So share everything, share it in the highest quality, give up your image selling <coughs> business. And that was a shock, a revolution for us, to my colleagues, to other museums. But in the end, it worked. What does this mean for our organization, for our department, for our web team? Besides standardization, the data through input manuals, large-scale cataloging projects, the clearing of copyrights, and also linking the text labels from the galleries to the database, and linking literature and documentation to the objects, we wanted the data and the high-resolution images visible for all kinds of purposes and all kinds of users. We do that through the website. So, what can you do online with our collections? Under the heading collection, you find four options, and I will explain them to you. You can search the collection with all kinds of keywords, access all kinds of sub-collections. An art museum is a physical space where people can enjoy art and history. They can stand next to the painting. They can come closer, see all the beautiful details, enjoy every single brushstroke. So that's what we wanted on the internet too, more or less. 
In our vision, the internet is the biggest museum on the planet. It's a gallery space that can house our more than one million objects at the same time together with everyone else's objects. So it's the best place to zoom in to art. See every detail. And like you see here, even the place to touch the works of art. Well, keep that on your tablet at home. Uh, while the options refine, you can use image only or on display in a museum, and you get uh, more specific search results. You can also refine on color, like I did here. I used the color blue. So you get results with objects you've never noticed before, and that's really fun. If you want to refer to an object, you can use the permanent link. This was also one of the must-haves by opening up the collections. And there is also an option to send a comment or a question about an object, which ends up in our collection information department mailbox. And every day we get some 20 or 30 mails. Almost every week we get an offer by someone with a real Rembrandt or a Van der Velde. Happily, we get a great, great amount of additions and improvements, like Merkelbach should be Merkelbach, with a C. Uh, or people ask for more information, like a silver fan. And we do get comments with an angry tone, such as these. Someone is very surprised about a wrong description, and in his or her opinion, this false description will continue on. We answer them very kindly and seriously. And of course, we got lots of compliments. Another thing uh, is you can look for research by consulting our online resources in the library catalogue or in the online catalogue. You can book a visit to the reading room, and that's in our Kuipers library, which contains more than half a million books you can ask for. If you want to see a print or drawing in real life, you need to make an appointment in the study room and this is open to everyone. You don't need to be a researcher. The option Explore the Collection opens up a world of additional information that deepens the Rijksmuseum collections, such as highlights or browse the collection with specific themes or stories. And specifically, the latter includes some stories about historical persons or timelines, such as the Dutch overseas. And this section will be more and more expanded in the future, especially in cooperation with the public and education department. And this department is also responsible for the multimedia tour, which you can download as a free app on your personal device in the museum, but also at home. And last year they developed an exciting family game as well. And at the end of your tour, you get a phone call, a small message from our director, Mr. Wim Pijvers. And other products were made by this department, like the digital school books called School Bag, Scholtas in Dutch. Nice features, and all of these products are produced with our own data and our own images. And then the last option, a very nice one, which became a huge success, it's called Rijk Studio. Here you can create your own collection, you can order prints for your house, you can design your own creation, or you can link like favorite objects during your museum visit or at home. And the new Rags Museum is a place where everyone is a curator. Currently there are 250,310 Rags studios, like so-called mini exhibitions or mini collections available on our website. Returning subjects in these collections are flowers, portraits, Vermeer, Rembrandt, but people also create sets about clouds, the color red, moustaches, their hometown, or even beautiful butterflies, like you see here by Miss Elba. And for example, this Japanese girl is already collected by 70 people, while she otherwise probably would never have become known. Here you see a necklace inspired by a still life with golden goblet by Peter de Ring. And this leads me 
to the next slide, which tells you about our annual Rijk Studio Award. This competition invites everyone, and you don't have to be a professional designer to make your own masterpiece inspired by our collection. And the winner gets an award, an amount of 10,000 euros, and a small exhibition in one of our galleries. It's really nice to see what people do with our collection. And finally, our museum staff uses Rijk Studio a lot. For example, some nice costumes gathered by our fashion curator because of the running exhibition Catwalk. But also the marketing industry uses our images on a larger scale, such as Fat Boy with the so-called Thick Bicker, the son of the Amsterdam mayor during the Golden Age. Or La Dress, a Dutch dress company with their Rijksmuseum dresses. Or a supermarket called Albert Heijn with artworks on their milk and yogurt cartons. And Dutch designer Droog Design. They were inspired by our collection for their show at the Salone di Mobile, a design show in Milan. And last year, Playmobil is a real hit. These two were shipped all over the world. And last month, Heineken came up with these bottles. The big question is, how was this brought online and came available for the public, for the marketing, for web applications? This is done through our API, and API stands, you probably know, for Application Programming Interface. And this is a tool which retrieves data from the Rijksmuseum database and sends it to the portals or the applications. And it is, in fact, a technical access to our metadata. A web designer, an app builder, a developer, or a programmer they all have freely access to our data via this API, including a URL to our high-resolution images. So, shown here in scripting language, this is an Asian object. Uh, the objects are published on the public domain, so it is open data. And we now have more than 200,000 objects available, and we actually have the largest open art collection data set in Europe. Our open data and images are enormously popular, which also reflected in use in the following applications, such as Google Cultural Institute, a part of Google with a kind of virtual exhibition space with use of millions of objects. Wikipedia, we provided by uploading our, media, our images in the multimedia library, Wikimedia Commons. Um, we work with ArtStore, this digital library and non-profit organization shares more than two million images in the arts, the architecture, the humanities, the science, for use and reuse. We work with ResearchPace, this is an initiative by the British Museum in London and supported by the Mellon Foundation. It works with a semantic layer over the metadata and it's a kind of interpretation layer which connects all kinds of cultural heritage together. We work with the Getty Institute in Los Angeles, who put their digital resources like the ULAM, United List of Artists Names, the Architecture and Art Devourers, AAT, and the Thesaurus of Geographic Names, the TGN, has linked open data to the world. This means that we, as an institution, can make use of controlled vocabularies, and our subject indexes are enriched, and our objects are easier to find. So we all know Europeana, a portal to find digitized collections of Europe's cultural and scientific institutions. And we have our data provided to a hackathon. This is one of the results, and I will tell you more about this in a minute. Um, we work with Modemuse. It's a Dutch initiative together with almost 15 smaller and larger institutions that brought together their fashion and costume collections online. It's surrounded by a huge community with very active bloggers and vloggers. So from this local aggregator, the objects are uploaded to European fashion. And then we work with Comet, c -Link Media, that stands for Socially Enriched Access to Linked Cultural Media. A collaboration of several universities, cultural institutions such as libraries, archives and museums, including the Rijksmuseum and the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. And the last one, Embedder. It's a simple tool to uh, simply embed images from Europeana in your own website or blog. 
Now I would like to point out some of these. And uh, like I said, we uploaded our public domain images to Wikimedia Commons. They can be freely used by Lemma writers on Wikipedia, both Dutch language pages as well as foreign language pages. And for this occasion, I picked out by using the Wikimedia toolbox, the Swedish Wikipedia views, and found out that the lemma about th the 30 year war, can I point it here? <laughs> you can pronounce it better than I can, uh, is viewed for more than 6,000 times in February, so one month only. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, our Rags Museum, this is the lemma in Swedish, and you see here the painting of our collection. It's a Gera Terborg, and it um, is about the Treaty of Münster. Just before the opening, we have our data provided to a hackathon, like I said. It was called Apps for the Netherlands. And here you can see one of the results, a fun tool called Faces from the Rijks Museum, built by a web designer who uses face recognition software on our portraits to discover if there are any similarities. So you can f refine on centuries or uh, faces looking to the left, faces looking to the right. And here is an example of a family uh, which you can depict all the faces together if there are any similarities. Europeana, the portal site, which started in 2008 with 2 million objects and already contains 30 million objects throughout Europe and abroad. Here we have our milkmaid with links to the Rags Museum website, Icon Class, the AAT. And you can search across Europeana by all European collection and seek out if there are, for instance, more paintings by the same master or any object that deals with the same theme. <clears throat> Again, Embedder, it's an online tool that allows users to easily embed openly licensed high quality images from cultural institutions via Europeana in their own website or blog. It has been developed by a Dutch institute called Kennisland as part of the European Creative Project. And I picked out a detail of one of our paintings from Frederick and Amalia. And uh, in a split second, you got your code of your detailed image. You can see here. So I drag a bounding box and then the code appeared. Some more about Comet Sealing Media projects. In collaboration with universities from Amsterdam and Delft, the Naturalis Biodiversity Center in Leiden, Wikimedia Commons in the Netherlands, we started working with an annotation tool. This annotations of birds, to be more specific, uh, on prints, on drawings, on paintings, and like you see here, on uh, ceramics. So last October we launched the Accurator. The Accurator is a platform that enables web users to help museum professionals to describe their uh, collection objects by providing expertise on specific subjects. So this is another crowd this is not another crowdsourcing project. It's more like a niche sourcing project. We try to focus on real experts. So first you choose an object, like you see here. And then you drag a bounding box. And here's an example of the red jungle file, some poultry occurring in Asia. This little <laughs> birdie here. Um, and then you fill in the terms and you get your annotation done, like you see here. There is a whole thesaurus of bird names behind it, and all names of species and annotations must be checked, of course. For this, the university has developed some algorithms to pursue the truth, the real terms. And it will be soon available as open source, so that you can all use it. And be besides the birds and the Bible domain, we now work on the fashion domain. And at the end of April, it will be presented at our fashion event, Stitch by Stitch. So please help us to annotate the fashion collection. And then the last one I didn't mention before, because behind the scenes, in silence, we build on our paint sample database. 
It's a tool to describe paint samples of paintings and locate exactly the samples in the picture. Although very specialized, but extremely valuable for the research, it is web-based, it's one of the first in its kind in the world. And this user-friendly interface shows where the paint samples were taken, like you see here. There are seven samples. A description of each sample. Sample number four. And uh, this describes all the different layers which a paint sample consists of and what they look like under the microscope. So the museum aims to digitize all paint samples documentation that is currently available on paper. And all existed embedded paint samples will be digitally photographed, which was a really challenge, this microscopic photography. The paint sample database will be freely accessible for anyone interested in our scientific data. And the product is nominated for the Museums and the Web Award. And as you, as you might know, this conference starts today in Los Angeles, so I keep my fingers crossed. To conclude, opening your collection for all kinds of purposes and all kinds of people is worth it. And I showed you all these examples of people enjoying our collection. So the Rijksmuseum Museum is everywhere now. And I picked up some of my mobile phone photographs. <laughs> this was made in uh, Amsterdam. You see a painting by Fernand Bol together with a contemporary photograph. I uh, saw the, Rem the Rembrandt in an Amsterdam office. I saw some flowers still alive in a lunch room in The Hague. And there was um, the milkmaid in a restaurant nearby Rotterdam. Or I saw this uh, Italian landscape in somebody's home. And I would like to end my presentation with a short video, and I hope it worked out.
so that was the latest fashion show of two of our famous designers, Victor and Rolf from the Netherlands. And they used direct museum images as well and changed them into wearable art. So thank you for your attention. Tak samuke. And if there are any questions, please feel free to contact me or <laughs> we have time. Thank you. I can only think of one word, and that's wow. But <laughs> yeah, that was very inspiring. Thank you so much. I'm sure there are questions. So if you want to ask a question in Sweden, Swedish, I can translate or uh, do it in English. Um, I will repeat it for the film. And also, please say where you're from and your name. That's nice. Yes, please. So we had a question from Per Lekholm, Westarvet, and he asked about the, uh, if there was any challenge, what, what the major challenges from the from the staff when you set out this work. Well, can you describe the? You've shown us the great result, but <laughs> yes. First of all, the staff, the museum staff, was a little bit skeptic about it, so they wanted to get control about our images. So first, we put it online under a CZ by. Uh, Creative Commons uh, license uh, so that our name will be <laughs> uh, used everywhere but it wasn't an opportunity for us to uh, to check this all so we uh, step over uh, to to this open uh, data so uh, the public domain uh, license but they were very skeptic about it <laughs> and uh, we had to pursue them uh, a lot <laughs> Please. Yeah. How much strategic support So the question was how much uh, strategic support. It was Mahendra Mahay from the British Library, sorry. Uh, and the question was how much uh, strategic support did you get to do this change? Yeah, um, the most important thing was our direction and they were uh, very much inspired because uh, Taco Dibitz, you saw already his quote, uh, well, yeah, he was directly uh, enthusiastic about open, open, open and, and, and yeah, let the image speak. That was one of the, the, main, uh, the main things. Uh, to do with it, so yeah, it's part of our whole str strategy, like you said, like you saw in uh, in our educational department, but also in the marketing and everything yeah, is around this 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 website and around these images. Okay, maybe I have a question then. Um, so you presented a lot of partnerships. It seems like partnership is a key word when, when pursuing such a development that yours. Would you, I mean, how did you go about, because uh, you seem to work with a lot of different bodies outside of the institution. Yes, but uh, they came to us <laughs> instead of we uh, go to them uh, by opening up your data and even it's a small part of your collection before 2013 I used to work in a smaller uh, museum but we we worked together and we were also disp inspired by the Rijks Museum um, but we opened up our collection in open data but just a small part of it so uh, yeah it, they came to us to, to, to use our data and to use it via uh, this API. And so in terms of inspiration as well, because you said you're the sort of leading this in Europe, uh, and what would you say globally uh, what goes on in different institutions around the world? Is there any, anything that you look at? What do you look at to get inspired for your work? Uh, yeah, <laughs> almost two years ago, I worked for a smaller museum, like I said, so I was impressed, like you all, uh, by what the Rijks Museum did. Um, but yeah, in terms of, uh, I, I look at uh, the American museums and the, and, the, and the English museums as well. So 
yeah, it's. I'm impressed still <laughs> what we are doing. So uh, it's for me an honor to 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 talk about it, and uh, what my colleagues uh, have done in 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 yeah so little time. And and they always say, well, keep it simple. Our house house style is simple. Our uh, the image is 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 the thing where everything is uh, is deriving from. And well, think big, uh, keep it small, simple, and. Uh, and move fast because we we did it in a scrum time, but go on and go on. Okay, question. Yeah. Okay, two questions from Amalena. Uh, the first one was around how big is your department, and the second one, uh, you told us that you get around 20 to 30 questions a day um, from outside. Is that number rising, and how do you deal with that? So a bit about the structure and organization. Uh, our department consists of uh, 12 people, and uh, those are information specialists, those are catalogers, and we have the special projects besides it, uh, like the print room online project. Uh, but we deal with five people every day uh, to answer these questions, and they, yeah, they, they are about our own collection. But most of them are about uh, somebody's uh, masterpieces at home. Uh, but yeah, uh, we try to help them by answering and uh, maybe refer them to other uh, colleagues in the country. Yes, please. Okay, that was a question from Peter. He works at uh, Karlstad University and he asked if this, uh, so your work, the, the, the attraction of your work, has how much more res has it, has any more resources been given into, uh, to, um, uh, the departments working with conservation and and and, and uh, registrars with who work with more the practical part of the of the um, so has the digital sorry has the digital um, uh, work gained any more resources to other departments at the museum? Yes, uh, well, we are now open for three years, and uh, this was a, a huge amount of work, but. Uh, we now, yeah, going on by uh, by talking to our conservation and uh, and restoration department, so uh, that we can combine all their reports and 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 the paint sample database is is one step that direction, and also together with um, uh, the collection management department, uh, we're working on, uh, for instance, uh, barcodes so that you can uh, uh, track your collection uh, and, and make it easier to, to, uh, to move around with those uh, art objects. Yes, please. So the question was around any, uh, well, what legal, um, um, sorry, which obstacles, sorry, uh, what legal obstacles or any legal obstacles you met while doing this work? Well, um, some 80% of our collection is already out of copyrights, so we are lucky. And uh, instead of the modern art museum at the other side of the museum square, they are dealing with a lot of more, more problems. Uh, so, and we started with our uh, Rembrandts and Vermeers because they are out of copyrights as well. And uh, like I told you, uh, we started a clearing copyrights project besides all this um, uh, in collaboration with a lawyer. 
and uh, to fill in those uh, contracts and uh, whatsoever with new acquisition, we 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 lead through that uh, contract uh, definitely. So uh, we were we were aware of of, of copyrights. Uh, otherwise, we can't open uh, our modern art collection uh, as well. And there are uh, a lot of uh, images we can show uh, because we talk to the artists, uh, but they are not downloadable. So uh, then you get this image uh, from this is not downloadable due to copyright. Okay, thank you so much. I think you will have more questions in the upcoming break. Uh, so we're going to have a break now, uh, but be sure to be back 11.20. So we turn pause and we see us again 11.20. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So this is a gift to the UNHCR.